All righty. So yeah, so including function calls and error messages, um, I would describe this as basically convenience wrappers on, like this is like talks about how Arlang handles things. So as a preface, um, Arlang exports improved versions of stop warning message, which you may be familiar with. Um, and so it has some nice features and that you should and you should probably use them over base equivalence if you're writing functions and packages that have Arlang available. Um, so there are kind of two. So if you call Arlang abort directly within a function, it tries to print out what function it tries to tell the user what function caused the problem. Um, so it's generally a good thing, except that if you want to wrap the error message inside of a helper function, um, because then instead of raising the function that you want, like the function that the user called, it would raise the name of the function of the helper function. Um, so there's basically two use cases for like wrapping an error message. Uh, one is to kind of pretty print them. So in one case, you would pass a class to the abort call, and then you know you can handle the error afterwards. Um, and then another kind is basically like input checking functions. So you would write a function that checks if this thing is a string and then return an error if it's not a string. Um, and basically both cases, they're not super helpful because this function says my function and a check string X must be a string. Um, and then the other ones, you know, if it says check string. Well, where does the user calls check string, right? The user never calls check string. So how do you write a message that helps the user understand where the string should be, right? Like they know that you're looking for a string, but you know, NA is, isn't a string. So, you know, you have to like make that guess. Um, but you can actually pass the environment. So function, like the environment of the function of like that's calling it, if you pass it into the like su succeeding function into like abort, it will use that to determine what function to, to complain about. Um, so when you, so now when you say my function NA, um, X should be a string. And then the same thing with my function, you know, foo, um, this is not implemented or whatever, right? Like you can raise whatever error you want. Um, and then it would tell you error in my function instead of error in stop my class or check string. Good so far? Yeah, that's, that's really simple and clear. Yeah. Yeah. This is not a long one, um, but I figure we'll just like power through it. So the other thing that you can do is pass in color arg. So we talked about metaprogramming briefly a little while ago. Um, and you can use color arg to get the name, like get the object, like the, the symbol or the expression that's being passed into X. Um, you can use color arg to get it. And then instead of saying, X must be a string, right? The user doesn't know that this is called X. Like this could, be, I think this is called arg in the outer function here. Oh no, it's it's X. But if this was called arg or something, um, you would then be able to say, okay, so the user instead of saying X, it should be a string. It should say my arg is a string, um, which matches what this function is. Um, so you could write check string very generically, and then you could write my function my arg, and then the user would know that, or you would you would be evaluating my arg, and then you know when you read the my function documentation, you can see oh yeah it's got my arg and not x, and so this helps you write more generic error handling that can be used now. That's awesome. I feel like I'm going to immediately jump to some of the packages that I'm working on and. Do this just, yeah it's a really like oh yeah you just pass this through and like some of it's magic but if you just do it enough time to think you'll get the sense of what it's doing i actually don't even know if you need to i don't know if you need to pass it in here I, i'm pretty sure you can pass you can call color arg inside of here and then it would work the same but that's something i haven't played with but they demonstrate it by calling it as the default of the arg name and then the user could, and then 
the function right like when you when you use the function check string you can rename the arc by doing that um i think that's what the benefit is yeah so like if you write check string my arg you could default to what this is and then um you could default to this my arg thing but then you can change it to say something else if it's not my arg that you want to do does that make sense so that's why yep. it's there Crystal clear. Yep. but you could also just instead of that you can always just default to passing in whatever is called here by wrapping this part in call caller arg um side benefit um so because the function knows where the error is when you want um backtrace uh it will print out when you call last error it will print out the correct spot so if you call if you pass in the caller end from error helper one to error helper two so this this basically sets up a stack right so uh if you call error helper uh then you know, you do this and then you pass it through all the way down to the bottom of error helper two then when error helper helper two fails it will tell you that uh in, if you don't do that then it will when you try to run backtrace on it it like goes all the way down to error helper two um but if you pass the correct call in, it'll stop the backtrace at where the error like was supposed to happen. So it'll trim the error to, yeah. So when you call my function uh, or their function, the function, the, the problem started like stops here rather than deeper. Uh, it's really and, helpful. Yeah. It's useful for people who are already like, are not as good as reading through like stack trace or whatever. Um, lastly, you can use this in test that um, if you upgrade to next version. That's basically all you need to know here. So it'll print out the call field and whatever that is monitored to the user. Hmm. Yeah. I didn't realize this was so short, but then I read through it like 30 minutes. I was like, oh, this is not bad. That's interesting. So, Tan, I'm, I'm curious. I, I know you went to the uh, RStudio Conf this last summer. Did, did you happen to go or hear anyone um, that went to that, the one the, that Hadley's, um, the workshop Hadley was running? Um, because uh, I, I think there was a section, there's a section on this topic, and uh, I was kind of wondering if uh, it I'm would sure. be useful additional material or not. Good Actually, they've question. got a they've got a GitHub repo. Let me see if I can um, find it. And I'll, if so, I'll, I'll throw the link in the chat. Uh... Search up GitHub and see what we get. Uh, abstract workshop. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah, you found it. Uh, if you go up a level, yep, I was about to throw that in chat. We may as well throw it in because I think we left it. Uh, yeah, that one right there, I think. <clears throat> I didn't. It looked like it was, it was a hastily. Th hmm? Okay. Yeah. So you asked if I was a, if I had attended this. I was TAing Quarto uh, with Tom Mock, so I wasn't able to go through any of these. Um, but let's see, test tooling and design. This is the section you were talking about. No, um that's testing. not that one i think there was um maybe even not be in the agenda uh there we are oh that's yeah it was informative errors with our line conveniently yeah. no slide yeah yeah, yeah. it's just <laughs> it's just a hastily thrown together rmd i think if if memory serves but I, i'm wondering if there's more to it than just pointing to the to the docs nope okay not really not too much more 
not too much more. I think it's pretty similar. So this talks about other ways to pretty print errors. Um, I don't know if you, you wanted to take a tackle this next week, I think. So I think we'll look so. at yeah. that later. Um, but chaining, oops. Uh, that's including the function calls. Yeah, so we talked through this today. Um, this talks a little bit about like error message styling, which is actually really interesting. I don't know if we've, anyone's ever read through this. Um, I don't think it would be rather dry as a book club because it's not really <laughs> teaching you anything. Um, but some of it's interesting. Like if you, I don't, I think I didn't really get to hear much of the Hadley talk, but, or like, um, the Q and A that he, he did when he came two weeks ago, but I think this would kind of be interesting in the design, um, choices, you know, like, yep. This yeah, the the, the design the design book that he's he's working on right right now yeah yeah exactly. exactly this is kind of like that so that would be interesting and I imagine this would come with that but you know the problem should start should be said with a must and can't and all of these things um, that's pretty cool I like it. In your experience, uh, Tan, is there any reason not to use CLI, um, except that it adds a dependency? Um, so CLI, um, the yeah, so it's primarily dependency. So it doesn't directly add anything. Oh, it used to add glue, actually, but now it doesn't add glue. I'm curious how they manage that. Um, so I see, I seem to recall something about like the anti color scape sequences work on some contexts and not in others. But... Yeah, so it, I think they, they, they have to balance some level of um dependencies versus not if that makes sense so like they have to be lightweight enough to only be messaging so it if it only imports utils then it's good right like then it like it's more lightweight um but it would be nice if it also did all of these other things like you know glue and crayon handles the coloring and whatever so i think they moved a bunch of it into suggests um, which is interesting, but there's no reason not to in my mind because I always end up needing Arlang for things um, for some one of these packages. I think it was, I always end up needing glue somewhere because I need um, Arlang, like I need Arlang, I need glue and I need utils and those ones I always kind of end up like using regardless of trade-offs like dependency wise but it's usually a dependency footprint problem um, that makes me you know choose to cut out cli and that's that's not really the case so to me you use no them um, yeah well, sorry go ahead go ahead no reason to in my mind had you used um um abort <clears throat> and, and and company in in any of your in any of your work, I'm I'm still kind of using base uh, stuff, mainly out of ignorance. I don't know, to be honest. I can't show you internal stuff, but I tend to use CLI for other things, at least. So let's see if I can bring up instance. And I, could, I, I think it just generally, like, if you're already using dplyr, there's no reason not to. And it would be a big lift not to use dplyr, right? So between generally, um, between generally, like, always needing dplyr and whatever, then you just always just use a board, 
and just make a hat out of it. A bunch of CLI aboard here. Got it. Yeah, I'm gonna have to up my game. <laughs> or up, up, upgrade my tools, at the very least. Yeah, and I think the really nice part is that it really doesn't um it doesn't really like take much to upgrade, you know? Like there's no real mental lift that you need to like learn this new skill. You just oh yeah, I need to use abort now. And then you just move on and just use it the way you expected it to. And then call it a day. Alrighty. Um, well, that was a fast one. Yeah. Didn't but super clear. Long. Yeah, it's it's the ones where it's like, oh, I didn't know why I see. Like, you've seen them, right? Like when you when you read the code, it's like, oh yeah, call caller end, but you don't really understand why. And I hadn't really thought about it. So this one's like an immediately useful kind of one. Um, exactly. But, yeah. Exactly. So, uh, cool. Well, I'm gonna put stop.